Now let's talk about countermeasures against attacks that are specific to web servers, not just sort of like general attacks. We need to try to detect hacking attempts. There are tools that will detect if your websites change. So you'll want to run those tools or those scripts or whatever they are to detect changes in executables or see if there are any new server files. You'll want to regularly compare hash values for server files with the original master hash values to see if there have been changes. And you'll want to have alerts run uh, in case any change has been detected. There are automated tools that will do this. Regularly audit all of the ports that your server is listening on. Make sure there are no new ports. Limit inbound traffic to just port 80 or 443. No connecting to 135 or 445 or anything that is not directly related to website business. And intranet traffic, you can restrict it or encrypt it and even use VPNs. For your server certificate, make sure that you pay attention to data ranges, um, that they're used validly, properly, that it hasn't been revoked, and make sure that the public key is still valid. Make sure that, uh, let's say that you have a, um, an, an Apache server, you can go to machine.config and map protected resources to the HTTP forbidden handler module. This basically disallows um, the uh, web server from handing over protected sensitive resources in a web request. If you don't need certain functionalities, remove their related modules. Turn off tracing, turn off debug, so then you don't inadvertently send uh, error messages that, that you don't want people to read. Um, and then, <clears throat> then make sure that in your code, you include access security. So use secure coding practices. Go to OWASP. They'll help you. Ensure that you code access security policy settings and make sure those policy settings uh, ensure that your settings are uh, restricted. Um, ensure that IIS is configured to reject tra directory traversal. You should recognize that, that dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. Always install new patches and updates. There's a tool that Microsoft has called URL Scan. Um, it will restrict certain types of HTTP requests. Uh, so when you block those kinds of requests, you help protect against potentially harmful requests uh, from getting to the web server apps. It will screen and filter incoming requests based on rules that you set as an admin. You can configure it uh, to look at HTTP headers and values and minimize the chance of SQL injection. And also it uh, makes it easier to just view the log file as well. It provides uh, logs that are formatted in the World Wide Web Consortium format. If you have any standalone servers, make sure that they have good access control lists um, to restrict or uh, block any sort of remote connections from admins, or and especially <laughs> editing the registry. Um, properly configure all your security settings. It's beyond the scope of this class to talk about how to harden a host uh, and to harden a web server but um, look at all the vendor recommendations. Uh, ensure you have restricted access to the metabase file using hardened NTFS permissions. Get rid of any unnecessary ISAPI filters. Get rid of unnecessary file shares uh, or secure sh shares. Um, use NTFS to restrict permissions. Put all the websites in the virtual directories on partitions that are not where the operating system is and restrict access using IIS web permissions. Get rid of any unnecessary IIS script mappings for file extensions that are optional. And maintain some minimal auditing level on the web server and protect those log files using NTFS. Your web server should be a dedicated machine or a dedicated virtual machine. Put the web server in a physically secure location. Uh, use URL mappings to internal servers uh, but just be careful about that so that you don't accidentally expose that information. Avoid connecting to IIS, uh, avoid connecting IIS to the internet, or frankly, any web server to the internet until you have fully locked it down. Tr 
try not to install IIS certainly on a domain controller because they have mismatched levels of security. So try to avoid that. I mean, sometimes you have little all-in-one servers that are meant for small business, but not anything public facing for heaven's sakes. Um, avoid letting anyone but the admin log on locally to the web server machine. Make sure you use server-side session ID tracking and match all connections with the IP address and a timestamp so there can't be any replays or theft or suddenly the IP address is different. Configure separate anonymous user accounts for each app if you are hosting more than one web app, which you probably will be. Uh, if you have a database server as a back end, put it on a separate server. And I'm going to tell you right now, between the web server and the, the SQL server, have an IPsec VPN. So for example, it's very typical to put the web server in a DMZ facing the public. It's protected by an outside and an inside firewall. And then the database server should be on the internal network. And then through the internal firewall is an IPsec connection between the web server and the SQL server. That's a best practice. Um, use security tools and scanners to automate the process of securing the web server to just kind of help you find the vulnerabilities. And make sure all incoming traffic requests are screened and filtered. There are third-party products you can use, including um, the one we just talked about right here, URL scan, including that. But there are more robust things like Barracuda. Um, so uh, use those to screen and filter web requests up front. And those are things we can do to protect against web server-specific types of attacks.